exactly did Lathrop get started? Let's find out today on All Things Lathrop. So today we're continuing the discussion on the history of Lathrop and we have a very special guest or should I say guest with us here today and that is Diane Verrata and her husband Mike Verrata um, who have been amongst the families here in Lathrop um, a very long time, certainly well before the city got incorporated in 1989. Uh, so Diane and Mike, thanks for coming on All Things Lathrop. Well, so uh, one of the things, um, you know, as we were sort of discussing um, before the uh, podcast is uh, something that I think a lot of people will um, not be aware of. I certainly just, you know, recently came uh, to understanding a little bit about this thing called Tokyo Joe's. So uh, what can you tell us about Tokyo Joe's? What is it? Was it a theme park? What was it exactly? Maybe you can give us some history on um, what I, what I believe to be is certainly a landmark um, in the history of Lake Thrupp. Well, it first started as a fruit stand. My dad was a truck farmer. Well, he farmed around here, too, on this land, uh, but um, grew vegetables. But then after that, he uh, trucked vegetables to the markets, some in Modesto. He got some from French Camp. He was, their family was one of our growers. Okay. Um, he went, brought them to Oakland, to Stockton Market, um, delivered to a lot of grocery stores in Modesto. But and we grew a few of them, but a lot of our growers were in French Camp. And mm -hmm. at the uh, later years, he started a fruit stand on Highway 50 there, uh, between Louise and Lathrop Road. It's called Tokyo Joe's. In the, at the old days, it started as Highway Market, wasn't it? And um, then it became Joe's Joe's Place, huh? There was another name. <laughs> okay, um, Highway Market. It was. And from a fruit stand, it grew into a little coffee cafe. And then he um, had a, a, it grew into a gas mart. We added the gas pumps there. Okay. Then diesel had been in the back. We moved our warehouse from home uh, to the pro property here behind the fruit stand. And it was a big dance hall. Okay. It ended up where people from the Bay Area all over even came in the fog. To the old, uh, they sat on bales of hay and on there wow. at a band every weekend. So that was quite the uh, quite the place to go to. For yes, that was the, many people here say that's the best the entertainment later wow. had. <laughs> that's pretty good. So from a fruit stand to uh, later down the line became a gas station. Yes. Okay, and so uh, for those of you that may know about it or may not know about it, uh, the if I'm understanding this correctly, Tokyo Joe's is now the present day Joe's Travel Plaza. That's it, yes. Okay. After he sold it, it came Joe's Plaza. Wow, and so that's that's awesome, that's amazing. And so, um, when did when did the uh, sale happen, if I'm curious about that? Ooh. When did it go from Tokyo Joe's to Joe's Travel Ooh, do you remember Joe's 2011? No. Gosh, I don't know, Ray Ray or that, you think? I think it's 2010 to 11, what's that? Uh, okay. You'll have to ask Joe's Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. That's really cool. So the name uh, Tokyo Joe's, obviously, well, I'm assuming Joe's obviously was the name of your father. Yes. And so um, he wanted to name it Tokyo Joe's. Why exactly? Well, they couldn't say his last name, and I mean, he, uh, all they knew him as Tokyo Joe. Oh. So okay. that's um, more or less how it became famous. Got it, got it. And, and they kept the name, like okay. true owner. Well, that's really cool. That's definitely a great way to honor your uh, your father um, as well as your family's heritage. Yes. Um, that's that's really honorable and that's really cool. I I I just came to understand this uh, recently about Tokyo Joe's, uh, who um, a friend of ours mentioned that, um, and so that was something that I never knew about. To me, it always was Joe's Travel Plaza. Uh, yeah. And, you know, okay. like we were talking earlier, my family came here in uh, 1989. So much later than um, than when you guys uh, grew up here in Lathrop. Right. Um, and so on that note, um, 
I know we were talking a little bit before the uh, before the podcast, um, and so you were telling me originally that uh, your family came from the state of Nevada over to Lake Throat originally, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and so about what time would you say that this happened? Um, was it early 1940s or about what this, what was this time? Um, they came, well, my dad lived here. He was born in Val Bellevue, Washington, and then uh, he comes from a family of nine, um, <laughs> yes. seven to nine kids. Yeah. And um, so they uh, were all born in Bellevue, Washington, and uh, they came over to French camp here. Just like a Beverly Hill Billy side. Oh, okay. They, the, the French Camp Bill Billy <laughs> And they ended up in French Camp Bowman Road, I think is where it was. Okay. 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 And they were uh, farming and getting <clears throat> various jobs that they can um, find. Got it. It slowly built up from there. Okay. And then, so was it in French Camp that uh, you were based, or is it just French Camp for a while and then? Moving quickly. I think from French camp, they went to the to internment camp, huh? I think, because yeah. my mom was also born in uh, French camp. Uh, on the sound key. Yeah, sound key general. She's from the French camp area, too. Got it. And then uh, they got married uh, right away because they're on their way to camp. And so, um, they went to uh, Gila, Arizona. Okay. Observation okay. there. So you've been, your family uh, has been in Lake Thrip since um, early 1940s then? Yes. Okay, shot it. And so just real quick, I know there was a, something that you uh, commented early on, and that was the section of what we now call Interstate 5 or I-5. Right. Uh, you mentioned that it was actually high, Highway 50. Yeah. Talk about that. What, what was that? It was originally Highway 50. How did that? How did it all get worked out? It was a hub. highway went all the way through. It's called the Lincoln Highway, but it was uh, just two ways. Now it's split, you know, the okay. way and the others left and right. Uh, mm. But um, that's what, it was just this, the main highway it went right by our freak stand. Got it. And that was the main road to San Joaquin throughout San Joaquin. Okay. Interesting. See, this little tidbits like that that I think our audience could definitely appreciate knowing that because like you know uh me growing up that was that was always i5 that was for me that was like a dumb moment it's i5 but it obviously like you said that was actually um um, um highway 50 you said yes. and so that's that's very interesting that's definitely a cool little cool uh nugget of history there um and so i want to transition to talking about um your childhood and what you remember uh the city of late growing up um you know, like we were talked about early 1940s, probably about 1943, 45, uh, that you um, came over to the city of Lake Throat. What was that like? What was the uh, landscape like? Um, and maybe even talk about the population of the city about that time. I think I was about two or three when we came here. We lived in a house on the levee. Um, it's, it's gone now. Forgot. I forget the person's name. Uh, Turtle. Lindsay, that it was at Birdles? It was near Birdles. the McGee. This was McGee's farm. Um, mm. But anyway, the, it was all farmland here. Got it, got it. And uh, we farmed many acres. I think what he had, tomatoes and all I forgot. But um, we lived there for a while. And then we moved across the highway okay. to where we are now, near this place of school. Oh, okay, okay. So closer, basically on the west side. Yeah. West side of the freeway. That's called the historical Lathrop on that side. On the east side, you mean? Yeah. Got it. So <laughs> east side, yeah. Is all of east side, uh, the city east of the freeway, considered historic now then? Or is it just like uh, a certain yeah, section? I think yeah, all the area near the Lathrop School, the railroad drag, that's the old history part. Got it. <laughs> Well, actually, that was all farmland, too. Wow. But, um, yeah, this was all farmland. It was all farm? And he adds. Were there a lot of uh, farmers back in the day farming you? Or, okay. She went to alfalfa. Oh, that's true. Well, the alfalfa. Alfalfa on this side. We did have some over there, too. 
that's that's very interesting. Uh, do you remember what the original attraction uh, for your family and coming from Nevada to uh, Lathrop was? Well, I guess because they were kind of raised here. Oh, your your folks were raised. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. So he was coming. He was coming back to be essentially. He's coming from Bellevue. Tell here. Got it. Wow. That's that's really cool. Um, so you mentioned like farmland. There was a lot of farmland uh, here. Um, certainly, when I grew up, uh, much much later than um, than your family, and you know about 1989, 1990, uh, where I grew up on Fifth Street, everything south of uh, O Street was all farm. Well, was all being developed. That was all bare land. And so I remember a lot of the water trucks were is now obviously occupied by homes. Uh, by the developer Kibi, I remember a lot of the water trucks going through and you know basically watering and prepping the ground for development of that uh, house building. So, um, what was it like? Were there any stores? I guess besides your father's. Oh yes, store. Main back? part of uh, later was along the railroad track. You know where you uh, old off of Seventh Street now. Yes, the post okay. office. Got it. Um, uh, let's see, we had a grocery store. Yep. There were... Delta, Delta Mark. Delta. Delta Market, which is now called, for those of you watching, that was that was now called La Reina the Smart. But I, I do remember as well, it used to be called Delta Market yeah. back in the day. Yeah. What was that other one? It was a hardware or something. Um, the, is it 4th Street or 5th Street? I forget the person that room. Cretal. Yeah, no, not Cretal. Was it? Point, point, oh, wait a minute, yeah. Oh, I forgot their name. They had a Sixth Street Market. Cute little store on the corner. It's a house or something now. Wow. Near there was a little fire station how we first started. Got it, got it. So there was a fire station back then. Yes, about it. Was it, was it, and I think I read this in, in a book uh, that was developed um, recently, uh, was it more of on a volunteer basis that the fire? The cell, yeah. Okay. My dad did that too. Wow. When the sirens go, they were on her. Drop everything. Oh, wow. To the oh, my. Yeah, that's interesting. That's that's really fascinating. It was all volunteer. Because obviously, you know, it was unincorporated. So obviously that probably demanded a lot more engagement right. from the community to basically, uh, you know, take care of themselves in a sense. And that's that, interesting. That's really. So was the city uh, governed by um, the county in terms of like the county sheriff for police services? Or was that also on a volunteer basis as well? Uh, that came from French Gap area. The sheriff. They you have to ask Benny that. He's a <laughs> police fire department. And he's one of the gold nuggets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you could sum up your childhood memories of Lathrop in three words, how would you describe Lathrop back in the day growing up here? Or even one word if you want to keep it simple. It's a great growing community. Great growing community. That's awesome. And so how would you reflect on where the city is today? Um, like in a nutshell, even like a simple sentence. Obviously growing, come, coming back from Lathrop, you know, in the early 1940s to today were, you know, um, amongst the, if not the fastest growing city in, in all of California. And I'm sure you guys are well aware of that. And even most, one of the most fiscally sound cities um how would you describe lake up today as compared to what you know the statement that you just made about your um the view of lake up growing up well thanks to the phillips that grew and that started our part of lake up the historical part they built that and then the del Osos built all this river islands so i mean it made it beautiful which is nice to show up to lake up today yeah i agree Send we have certainly all reaped the benefits of that growth. And so I tend to agree. put us on the map. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, kind of switching topics a little bit. What can you tell us about some other besides your, uh, your father's, um, market and then later on became a gas station known as Tokyo Joe's. What can you tell us about some other landmarks, uh, original landmarks of life up that people may or may not know about? Um, from but in, no, it's okay. <laughs> Let's see. It's amazing though how 
the city part of the old city part of Lake Brook. We were a railroad town. Um, I went. My kids too went to all went to laser school. The graduate is there. My third grade was in a little church basement down the street from the school. Wow. Where was that at? Do you remember? It's the old Church of Christ. You know where the oh. Lazer Grammar School is? Okay, yes, yes. So there's a little white on the corner. There's a fine... The corner of 5th and J Street. I think, yes. Okay. Okay, to the basement of that church. is so... Oh. I had my wow. third grade class there. I had no idea. I <laughs> know. That's... Well, that's oh, why we're talking about the history of Lake of, right? <laughs> that's awesome. Wow, so Thompson Road. Thompson, oh. And that's where the church was. That's where you went to your fourth grade class. Or whatever. Third grade, uh, yeah. Wow. And, yeah. On Saturday nights, they had uh, movies at the uh, in front of the old age of school. Okay. I remember watching the movie Swiss Family Robinson. Man. Wow. We sat under the big old tree. Big screen. <laughs> Out there, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. That was awesome. That was another entertainment. That's uh, so cool. The um, grocery store there, uh, thing for Halloween to keep the trouble off the streets. We all gathered there for hot dogs and stuff. They yeah. down. That was our Halloween party. Gotcha. Gotcha. There. And later on, they had the big watermelon feed put on Valverde Park. Yes, yes. That's the later part. Do you know the history of Valverde Park? Not to put smoke. I know I'm putting you on the spot, obviously, but I know there's a bit of history. Uh, do you know? In the well, that came about when they put out, the, that was the, it is today, the Latham Community Center. Yes, yeah. And that's their park, and it was named after uh, Manuel Valverde. Manuel Valverde. That had, uh, he had a grocery store. Okay. On Dossier's Road, but it, it started on Latham Road, in Highway 50. Wow. And then the Gattles had a, a well, it was Rosie's Corner. It was yeah. a, a, a cafe and a restaurant and, um, I mean, a gas station. Gotcha. It started years ago. Now, Benny could tell you that. It's his art. <laughs> well, you certainly obviously have a lot of history, you know, coming, you know, to Lathrop, uh, you know, 1943, 1945, around that time. That's obviously well, well before my time. So uh, there's a lot of history and, um, yeah, definitely thank you for sharing a lot of that. And, um, yeah, there's, there's so much rich, rich history. You met, mentioned, uh, Valverde Park, for example. Uh, you know, there's another, I, we were, I know we were talking about this earlier, but, um, uh, another man who was very instrumental in, um, I guess you could say the city's development. And that was Captain William Sims Moss. Uh, and so, you know, for those of you who don't know it, this little set that I know we were just dis discussing this in an earlier video, there's a bridge named after him, you know, the Mossdale Bridge. And then obviously there's this development that, that I now live in is called Mossdale or simply put Mossdale. And so like Valvery Park, um, there's a lot of rich history that I think is um, definitely worthy of, of knowing it, you know, let our audience know that there's, you know, although it may be a relatively small town compared to other big cities such as Stockton um, or even like a New York City, for example, there's a lot of rich history that is worthy of speaking to um, and letting our audience know that, um, you know, we're honestly, we're not just another town, you know, uh, there's a lot of, um, there's been a lot of work that has been done to develop the city. And obviously, like you said, put the city of Latrop on the map. Um, and I definitely think, you know, uh, uh, making the city incorporated was definitely a huge step in that forward direction of, you know, putting the city on the map and just continuing to grow it to the point of where we are and, you know, still very rapidly growing. Uh, you know, a lot of the houses in River Islands are being built. Uh, essentially, it seems like on a nonstop basis. Yeah. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of growth and a lot of history um, to talk about. Uh, what would you say is, um, or maybe are some of the biggest changes that you have seen from growing up here in Lake Drup to where we are now today? I'd say River Islands. <laughs> We're right on that side of the side of the freeway. What about the east side? Is there anything that sort of sticks out in your mind east of uh, now Highway 5 or I-5? 
Well, they they more or less kept it historical. Okay. All the advancement came mostly on this side, but they did. You know, we had the big same art shopping center over there, and all greens. And yeah, that was nice. So it's also slowly getting developed as well. Yes. That's true. That's that, nice. that, that helped our side yeah. while this was being built. I agree. And I think most of the, uh, you know, I guess River Islands probably has most of the houses, but to be fair, uh, the east side has most of the food. And so we got the food trucks there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 decent additions like Dutch Bros, uh, the coffee lovers out there, um, and some, you know, uh, uh, extra food food uh, food places here like that. that you know, local businesses, Milan's Pizza, what have you. And so obviously, you know, uh, like yourself, I definitely like to support our local businesses. And so uh, they have a lot of the houses, but we got the food over here. So they got to come to our side. <laughs> All the good stores are here. Yeah. We're running out of room. We're going towards Hooked Camp. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. And that necessarily wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, but, you know, as the city continues to grow and grow, um, that's, yeah, that's really a, a positive change, right? Yes. A step forward, and obviously that's in the right direction. Um, so I want to take a few moments. I know that, you know, I've been asking you a lot of questions as it relates to uh, Tokyo Joe's and your father's um, original marketplace and then also a gas station. Um, is there anything that you would like to uh, speak to that maybe I haven't asked you about or, you know, maybe your audience may not even know uh, as it pertains to uh, the rich history of the city of Playthrough? Well, uh, I guess that helped build later, too. Uh, we had uh, many penny candies, and all the youngsters who were around the area there would come several times a day. Even the, the Cotton's family thing would come to uh, get our goods there. We had a lot of wine and uh, beer and wine that dropped in a lot of. Okay. Um, and then the, uh, produce, of course, unless the. Um, they were famous for their hamburgers and chilies too. A lot of it oh. had an egg farm. Okay. A lot of big uh, old people of Glacier too. They came from that. Got it. That and uh, this was the Aunt family, you said. That was ours. Oh, that was yours. I'm sorry. I said that. So I'm sorry. Sorry, correct. Highway Park. <laughs> okay. Okay. How we know Jones now? Oh yes, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. And then my uh, weekend, they had the big uh, dance hall going. I heard about that. But then when the gas station opened, there we got a lot of people, the truckers and all the highway trade came. Okay, okay. So that that's how, too, I guess we became famous because we had a little bit of business right there. Got it. It was easy access. So you guys were definitely, if not the highlight of the town back in the day. Part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's really cool. So your, your last thing, uh, for those of you that don't know on the yet, uh, that are tuning in today, um, obviously your 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 name today by marriage of to your husband is Horada, but uh, what was your father's uh, or your maiden name? Takashita. Takashita. Wow. So you know, I don't know how much information is out there on the web about the Takashita family, uh, but uh, that's that's really good to know. That's really awesome. Um, any final thoughts, uh, even from yourself, Mike? Uh, you know, I know that you grew up in French camp. Yeah. Uh, many final thoughts that you guys would like to uh, uh, speak to or maybe throw out some little uh, gold nuggets of history on the city of Playthrop? Uh, or, you know, something that our audience, uh, you know, may not have even known even after hearing everything that we've talked about today. I'll play a little F. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. It was like a big glass company there. LOF Club. Okay. Where the uh, Tesla thing is now. Yeah. That right. That's right. That right was a big because that way from how Okay. So that was a huge. Yes. It uh, messed fertilizer. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which is now called Simplot. Yes. Right. I read about that. So I was prepared to. Now that big thing again. <laughs> okay. So it was called Best Fertilizer. Yeah. And today, for those of you who are tuning in, that's now called Simplot. Yes. Yeah, so it was big time. It's the same company that we're talking about today. So those are the two main... The big glass company. And the colony drivers. And yeah, the LOF is, uh, is owned by, was it, Kraft or something? Oh, well, right. Now it's Kraft Heinz or something. I don't yeah. know all that. It was taken over by uh, Kraft Company or something. Whatever the fellow's name is. 
Yeah. Well, definitely the more jobs that we can get to the city of Lerta, the better. I'm, you know, I'm sure. And even today, I'm sure it's still by and large a, a bedroom community in the sense that there's a lot of people that live here but work in other cities. Um, and so um, I'm hopeful that we get to the point where this is sort of a one-stop shop city yes. where we have everything, not just good food, but good paying jobs as well. Yeah. And so that's, that's definitely a goal. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Diane, and also your husband, Mike, uh, today for coming on the uh, podcast. Uh, for those of you listening today, I hope you found value in this podcast. And if you found some value, hit the like button, subscribe, share this video. Uh, there will be more, many more episodes that we uh, begin to talk about um, as we discover uh, something that we're calling all things like that. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, too.